Hi Jason. Hi John. Great to have you here again with Hardy's. Yep. Now, prebiotics and probiotics, mm. they sound very confusing. What exactly are they? Yes, it is a great question. We hear a lot these days, don't we, about good bacteria and bad bacteria. Well, you could say as a simple example that probiotics, meaning pro-life, are literally the good bacteria that have this amazing symbiotic relationship with us where they create so much of our health in our gut. And we know that our entire health profile is dominated by what's going on in our gut. So having good, healthy, symbiotic bacteria growing in your gut to keep you healthy is really important. So probiotics are that good, healthy gut bacteria, and bad bacteria is what we don't want. And the good bacteria and the bad bacteria exist on this kind of balance. So you want to have more good, about 80% good, and about 20% bad, just to keep us in check. Now prebiotics are slightly different because prebiotics are the food that feeds your gut. So your probiotics, think about as your proactive antibiotics, and that's where the name comes from, so proactive, keeping us well. And the prebiotics are the food that actually feeds into that gut. And of course we've had them in our food supply for centuries. And why are they so important to our health? Well they're so important because they run our health profile. Our entire gut profile is run by that bacteria. And a simple way of understanding that is that our bacteria weighs about three kilos. So for some people, you know, 5% or so of their body weight is actually their bacteria in their gut. And that, of course, influences all the different aspects. It influences how well your waste gets through, how well you digest your food, how well you absorb the nutrients and distribute them, your bloodstream, your energy levels are all dictated to by that intestinal bacteria. So it's such an important thing for your skin health, for your energy levels, for your longevity, is all dictated to by your probiotics. Where in our diet can we source prebiotics and probiotics? Well, there's only three food groups. The first one is in raw foods, so your raw plant foods, like for instance uh, bananas are good prebiotic foods, and apples are uh, in your raw vegetables of course, so number one is raw foods. Secondly is sprouted foods, and sprouted foods are pretty much the beginning and the end when it comes to prebiotics uh, content in foods. They are the best foods if you want good prebiotic content. And sprouts are amazing too because they're literally living and breathing. They are the grains and the seeds that are growing into new life. So you've got this incredible life energy about them, as well as vitamins, minerals, polyphenols, antioxidants. They really are an incredible superfood. And they are very high in fibers and prebiotics to feed your gut. And the other group is fermented foods. And of course, when you look at all the cultures around the world, particularly the longest lived cultures, the centenarians of people to live long, healthy lives, they've always had an aspect of fermented foods in their diet. So they've always had raw leafy green vegetables and fruits that they've eaten. But they've always also had things like sauerkraut in Germany and miso in Asian countries. Uh, and we've had things like yogurt. So there's always been their naturally fermented foods where the foods are naturally allowed to ferment and create their own good quality lactic acid bacteria. Lactic acid bacteria, sorry. And that then feeds the gut. So you're literally taking in good bacterial foods. And the other neat thing about that is it actually sterilizes the food so you can have it through winter. So naturally, as part of our evolution as humans, we actually created these foods that would also be protected and be kept sterile and safe through winter. So the only three food groups really are raw, sprouted and fermented, or of course, if you can't get it in that way, you get a good quality supplement. Now we're seeing a whole range of foods marketed around probiotics. Are they legit? Yeah, it's a great question, isn't it? Everything's got added probiotics and added prebiotics and added these things. Yeah, it's kind of a, a sad state on the reality of the food supply these days. It's literally that we have stripped and refined all the goodness out of our foods. So instead of actually making sure we have some raw foods, some sprouted foods and fermented foods every day, we strip the quality of the food, then we have to add a whole lot of things back in. It's kind of stupid, really. So a lot of those products aren't legit at all. You know, if you're really looking for a good quality fermented food, get, you know, like you've got in your store, some apple cider vinegar or a good probiotic supplement that can help out. Or if you can get a good quality yogurt for those people that can tolerate dairy, which there aren't a lot of, but if you can, that must make sure that it's from unpasteurized milk and it's naturally fermented. So it's very important that if you're taking probiotics, that they are fully fermented and they're naturally grown and they've got a good live count. You can't just basically cook something up and then sprinkle some acidophilus culture in and then sell it as a fermented food. It's just, as you said, not legit. Okay, so probiotics, prebiotics and children's health, 
Why are they so important? Yeah, it's a great question as well. Uh, as we're growing, particularly between the age one and seven, uh, we're developing our entire immune system. And we really develop, we, we're born with a very sterile immune system. We don't have any bacteria at all. And we literally, as we start to breathe and we, we, we take our mother's breast milk and it starts to literally grow and create our living intestinal bacteria that we then carry through our lives. So when we're young, we're very susceptible. And it's why if, if the mother's not eating well or if the child's in an environment with cigarette smoking or high stress, children will often get very sick get glue ears and infections and things. So keeping children's immune systems functioning really well is really important. And it's important for their long-term development as well, be it mental, their heart health, their cancer risk, all different things in that area as well. So very important to make sure that the, the probiotic bacteria and that microbiome, that gut bacteria, intestinal flora is healthy with children. And of course, the key steps are a good diet, making sure they're getting enough sleep, enough sunshine, because vitamin D has an influence as well, but also raw sprouted and fermented foods. And if you can't get enough of that, then making sure at least that you have a very good quality probiotic supplement that you use as well. So how does one know if they need more probiotics? Well, you'll get clear symptoms if you're lacking in probiotics. You won't be able to digest your food as well. You'll be tired and run down. You'll have bad breath. Uh, you'll get skin problems. But most of all, you'll get problems in that bloating and cramping. So if you're getting regular bowel problems, whether it's irritable bowel syndrome with all those side effects of flatulence and things, or real uncomfortable uh, parts of the body in this, in this particular part here where your immune system lives and all the micro uh, bacteria live as well, that's where you can really tell if you've got enough of a good balance. So the way to, to test it is how do I basically feel? And the other way to, to monitor that, of course, is how sick are you getting? If you're getting coughs and colds regularly, then your intestinal bacteria is not doing its job because it runs your immune system. 85% of your immune system is in there. And if that's not functioning well, then you will be regularly sick. So if you're the kind of person that gets sick in winter a lot, then you probably need to really work on your immune system and particularly getting more probiotics into your gut. So what's the best way to keep your balance of probiotics in check? Well, that's very, very simple. It's lifestyle. It's all about lifestyle. Your probiotic, your gut microbiome, your intestinal flora are all completely and utterly dictated to by your diet and lifestyle. So making sure you're getting enough sleep is really important because the gut repairs itself and the body takes care of itself when you're well slept. So making sure you're getting a good eight hours sleep a night, you know, as much as you can. Sunlight is important. So getting out in nature and, you know, getting out in the bush like we're sitting next to here, a beautiful day that it is. Uh, making sure you're getting sunlight and, and walking out and breathing and getting your exercise is a huge thing. Flexibility as well is important. So moving your gut, so stretching like yoga or any kind of stretching like that. And of course, ensuring that you're eating a really good whole food plant-based diet based around your raw sprouted and fermented foods and making sure you're getting lots of high fiber foods because fiber also feeds the gut. And your high fiber foods are very high in prebiotics. So prebiotics feed your probiotics. Your probiotics run your bacteria runs your immune system, runs your health profile, along with vitamin D. So really important to make sure you've got enough fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, whole grains and legumes in your diet, and make sure that you've got enough raw, sprouted and fermented foods as well. If we can't eat enough raw, fermented or sprouted foods, what else can we do? Yes, and that is a great question. If you cannot get enough raw foods, like for instance you're somewhere where you can't get enough, then there are some great supplements you can use as well. The thing to make sure is that they're good quality supplements, make sure the whole food supplements. So you can get things like a, a probiotic supplement that you can get, which is a natural living supplement. And at your hearty store, of course, as you'll know, you need to check in with them and make sure you're getting the right one. So a probiotic supplement is a good one to take for a period, particularly if you've been unwell, or if you've been on antibiotics, or if you're gonna go on into antibiotics, or if you've been on them and you've come off them and you haven't looked after yourself. So that's important. Or if you're giving up smoking or drinking or anything like that. So a probiotic supplement is important, but also fiber supplements are really important because fiber and prebiotics are those food that remove the waste and help support the gut, but also feed you those supplemental goodies as well. So it's important that you've got enough fiber. So a fiber supplement, a prebiotic or probiotic supplement, and the last one that really fits in well with this, and we're not particularly talking about this today, but it does fit in well, is digestive enzymes because they work very much alongside your prebiotics and probiotics. And people that generally have a gut that's gone out or is out of balance will also be lacking generally digestive enzymes. So in terms of starting the process of digesting your food well, that's something, again, alongside those dietary changes to bring those kind of supplements in as well. And your local Hardy store will know about that. 
Well, thank you, Jason. That's been fascinating. And we look forward to having you here again in a few weeks. Yeah, look, I look forward to it as well. Thank you.